Hello everyone and welcome to the realm and the wonderful world of Crusader Kings 2. We are once again playing a Game of Thrones modification and in case you've forgotten, my name's Burton. So come on down and join the rebellion because today we're playing as the Blackfires. So to begin with, my father Aegon IV is dead. The small folk named him Aegon the Unworthy and he was widely considered to be one of the worst Targaryen kings there ever was. He sired numerous bastards, with numerous women, from houses both large and non-existent, and I am a result of such desires. I am Daemon, a Targaryen on both sides, but I am known for the sword that I bear. The sword that was bestowed upon me by my father on my twelfth name day. And from that day forward, I took the sword's name as my family name, Blackfire. Though King Aegon IV legitimised all of his bastards on his deathbed, I chose not to rebel until 12 years after my father's death. Now you may think that I wanted the crown or the lands, and maybe part of me did, but do not mistake my true intentions this war was a war for love. It was a war for Daenerys. Daenerys, we will continue to keep a close eye on her. Now to understand why we have come to this, we must first go to where we have been before. 12 years ago when my father died, Daeron took the throne. I, on the other hand, chose to honour my father's arrangement with the Tyroshi, and I married the Lord's daughter. Lady Rohan. Rohan Zokan, daughter of Tyroshi Lord Archon Oro of Tyrosh. Now, on this day, my half-brother the King gifted me with the land that you see before us. Now my wife has been a good wife, she's remained faithful and given me 10 children, but we have yet to produce any love nor desire. Nat has always belonged to the Princess Daenerys. Her marriage to the Dawnist Prince, Marin Martell, was too much to bear. The King had denied me of my love, and although it pained me, I rode at the tourney on her wedding day. On that fateful day, my nephew, Baylor, he unhorsed me in the final tilt. I shattered my lance on his shield, and from that day forward, he would be ever known as Baylor Breakspear. Yet another one to keep an eye on there, I think. All that happened eight years ago. In that time, my resentment began to grow and those supporters who gave me counsel urged me to make a claim on the throne that was rightfully mine. Aegor Rivers, who you may know as Bittersteel, was one such man, as was my old friend Quinton, the Fireball Ball. They told me of the rumours of my half-brother, that Darien was not the son of my father, but that of my uncle Aemon the Dragon Knight, and that as I was a Targaryen on both sides, and a legitimised heir to the throne, I was a logical choice to replace this academic king. I was the better man, and I would be the better king. That's what they said anyway. Let us have a look at these. There is Aegon, my greatest general. He'll do as well in this upcoming war. And that brings us to today. Here we are in the day I raise my flag up in rebellion to claim what is mine. I am the king who bears a sword, a bastard no more, I am a blackfire. Okay, so we've got some people of interest we're going to be keeping our eye on. I'm going to make sure that we're uh, watching Bittersteel as well. And just for the sake of it, we're going to go ahead and, in fact I don't even need to do that. 
we will watch Brynden. Brynden himself is Master of Whispers, and he will cause us trouble if we do not keep an eye on him. We're going to need to fund this war, unfortunately. My treasurer, Fiona Rain, isn't particularly good at this, but we have little choice and no time in which to search for replacements. My wife, unfortunately, is also Spy Master, and she too is not very good at her job. She shall remain where she is, we will not be using her at all. My Justicar is Garth the Grey. Slightly better, but once again, we're going to have to ban him from leading an army. Instead, what he's going to be doing is going over to my stepfather in Tyrosh. The reason why he's going to be doing this, as you can see, they're not too keen in joining my war. So that's where we're going to do with our council. Next things we need to pick our ambition. In terms of our ambition, obviously we are wanting to become um, the king. We want him to reign. We're going to choose a focus as well. That is going to be war because war is what we're going to be best at right now. We're going to apply for a maester because we do have a lot of children. So let's have a look at ourselves here. As you can see, I'm skilled, attractive, strong. I'm a knight, I have the Sword of Kings, and altogether, I'm an aggressive leader. My children, unfortunately, are all too young to get us any alliance of worth. One of my daughters, Kala, she is betrothed to Aegor. So that is where my family stands right now. In terms of the war, well, what have we got? King Darren the Good. As you can see, he's not the best in terms of martial. He does happen to have some rather powerful allies, though. Prince Marin of Dorm. Leo of the Reach. Damon of the Westerlands. And Eldred of the Vale. We are fortunate that the Starks haven't joined in. And for that matter, we're also fortunate the Iron Islands are keeping out of it. We, however, have quite a few people who have chosen to join us. Unfortunately, none of them are as strong as these. So we must strike quick and we must be decisive as well. Firstly, let's join our armies. We need to reorganize a unit, get everyone in the center. I will lead the force myself, I do not want to remain a black heart. The question is where to go first? Well, we've got a lot of issues. Dawn to our south is our enemy, however, we do have the Yarnwoods as well. They have chosen to side with us. The Reach is somewhat divided in the south, with both the Florence and the High Towers joining us. So perhaps we go for the Reach first. The Krakals will come down. The reins will be better saved with the Lannisters holding them up. Meanwhile we have a large force in Harrenhal, should we try and join them? Let's see where they muster their troops and we'll go from there. Okay, so the troops have been brought up. We've got Grassfield to the north, 2000, or Ashford on the other side, 1300 men. We're going to march first on Grassvale. Grassvale is the lands of the meadows, that shall fall fairly quickly. Now we are not going to stay and besiege any areas, we are simply going to try and take out their troops. We'll try and take these out here, and maybe intercept this little army of Lord Paramount Leo. That's the plan anyway to begin with. So off we go, we will be there on the uh, 27th. They're going to be out of there by then. We're not going to be able to catch them in time. A lot of people joining the Crown Loyalist factions. Our maester has arrived. Excellent. Here he is, Eustace. He's not too bad. He'll help with my children. Okay, we're almost in Grassville now. Okay, 
An opportunity has arisen in Farrah's Cross. Seven and a half thousand, the army of Lord Mortimer. Could we deal them a blow here? I think we're going to attempt this. The downside to this is we're giving the Tyrells time to gather their forces together, but we can't pass up this opportunity, not when we've got allies so close. And so the first battle, Battle of Dalston, is over before it even started. Lord Mortimer has uh, found out we're on our way, he's making his way back to King's Landing. He'll actually get there before we do. We're still going to take them out and tr try and uh, try and get us some advantage. We need to try and cut them off. They're continuing to run. They're going towards the forces in Harrenhal. Ah, good. It looks like the army of Morgan and Raymond are heading down to meet up with us. We're catching them in a pincer. Okay, so the Battle of King's Landing has begun. And who have we got? Mortimer of Rosby, Pete of the Kingswood, Clayton of Hayfield. It looks like they're mainly uh, heavy infantry, light infantry. And they've actually got quite a lot of light cavalry. However, we have a lot more. So providing that our heavy infantry can hold out against superior numbers, we should be okay. Our reinforcements are on the way, they will soon be with us. And Miss Sandy has arrived at my court. Who is she? Harry's of White Sword Tower has arrived. Okay, thank you for attending. Martyrs has also arrived. They're all dead. Why are you sending me dead bodies, sir? Patience is a virtue, but sometimes it gets on my nerves. My son, Eamon, never loses his temper, always waiting patiently for a chance to retaliate. Good. I like this. Well done, Eamon. Back to the battle. Our allies have joined us, and now it's only a matter of time before we crush these. And then we can turn our attention towards the lands of the Reach. Even better news, Lord Paramount Arian of the Stormlands, Arian Baratheon has chosen to join us. And yet another person comes to us, Lord John of Old Town, so the High Towers are also with his excellent. Nerys. It appears as if she's died. Aenys, my son, needs a new guardian. Bertans, you will do the honour. Oh, Daenerys as well. Who have we got for you? You would just go to Eustace, you would go to the Maester. Back to the battle. Oh, it appears as if it's only our centre that is holding. However, they are also broken. This shouldn't last too much longer. Their reinforcements are too far away. And ours are also close. There we go. So the Battle of King's Landing. We are victorious. We lost uh, 4,400 4, men, give or take. They lost almost double that. Brilliant. It's time for me to choose how I want to educate my son Aenys. Unfortunately Aenys, I do not have the money right now. So that will have to wait. So they have been routed and they are on the run. They are heading away. Looks like they're going to Stokeworth and Rosby. Now the question is where to go next. Do we pursue? Or do we take care of the larger threats? I believe we should take care of the larger threat, which will be the Tyrells.
Let's have a quick look at the notes that have come in. Nothing of interest there in Tyrosh. More people becoming a... Uh... Oh, that's all rubbish. Let's continue then. So this is going to be a fairly large force we're going to engage in. This is going to be the second main battle of the war. Unfortunately we do have an army of Lord Wallace coming down in our rear. I believe we've got adequate uh, people there to take care of it. The army of Garland. We must be careful, we're almost outnumbered here. Now this is a question, where to go from here? How quickly could we intercept these? They will be on the 16th of June. They will arrive on the 25th of June. It's a difficult decision, I think we are going to go ahead and... No, we're going to stay the course. For now. My lord, it has come to my attention that no one has been designated regent for Black Cards. That's my wife, a fine proposal. Looks like there's a second battle of King's Landing. We shall take that fairly easily. Jaehaerys of Nimark has arrived at my court. Hello, Jaehaerys. You're dead. More dead Valerians. And where are these going now that they've joined? They're all going to Longtable and Farron's Cross. What are they made up of though? Let's see if we can intercept them. How long would it take us? 4th of July. I think we're just going to miss them. In the meantime, we have to be wary of the Dornish. They are coming up. Don't run away too quickly. They've got another army of 10,000. We need to uh, get this sorted. Okay, and we've just missed them. Not to fear, we're gonna take care of these. Or should we? No. Back to King's Landing, hopefully. These will notice they have a Tyrell army in their back. Let's speed things up, hopefully we can catch them in time. Our forces are being engaged. Um, I doubt we're gonna get there in time. Seven and a half thousand we being held up. Yes, we're getting there just in time to relieve them. Excellent. It looks like it's Lord Paramount Leo Longthorn himself. So let's see what we can make of this man, whether we can actually take him hostage. Damon Blackfire was the true heir of King Aegon IV. How can it not be so when he was given the ancestral sword Blackfire? My bloodline is the rightful line of kings, the Targaryen line of Aegon Sundarian being illegitimate. And as such, I will sit the Iron Throne. So now I've got a high lordship claim on Dragonstone as well as the lordship. Excellent. And now I have the same on King's Landing. It is my city after all. Fighting across the fields, I see an enemy soldier, cut off from the others. While I can't tell who it is, it clearly must be a highborn noble. Let's charge. As I get closer, I realise the enemy soldier is Lord Mathis. Who is he? Mathis Merriweather. Oh, he's already turned to uh, run back to Long Table. Excellent. And there we go, so we've won the second battle of King's Landing. We've uh, taken out a royal force, and we've just taken out a Tyrol army as well. That's going to be it for this first episode. Thank you very much for watching. Give me some thumbs up if you're liking what you're seeing and you want this series to continue. Okay guys, you take care.